Hello, welcome back to the videos. This is another song in that series I'm calling uh, Revisiting the Classics. This tune I've chosen uh, for this particular video is Pike County Breakdown, uh, almost always played in the key of A, capoed up second fret. This is one of those quintessential uh, Scruggs instrumentals that every traditional bluegrass banjo player should know. It's almost one of those uh, what I call required tunes. So I'm assuming that most of you folks watching the video already know how to play some version of Pike County and it's probably just a traditional Scruggs version which is great that's the way you should start but uh, I want to throw out some new ideas in this video and maybe help you move around in the tune a little bit differently so I'm going to give you a, a shot of the fingerboard now one thing to take note of rhythmically speaking about Pike County it's a pretty uh, simple tune it's, as far as the chord structure goes but there's uh, a distinction between what I call contemporary versions of this song and the original version recorded by Flat and Scruggs. More contemporary versions of this song substitute a G major chord. Uh, even though we're capoed in A, you know, it'd be a G major chord here, your dominant seventh chord. They will substitute that over the riff. So when the banjo player is playing the, the ID lick, they will substitute a G over that. That is not in the original version. And it's not to say that it's bad, it just depends on you know your sense of taste, whether you like that substitution or not. But don't let that throw you as a soloist, because sometimes I see banjo players who are used to playing the traditional version of Pike County. When they hear the G chord substituted and they're not used to hearing it, it starts to make them change the ID lick or try different things that kind of gets them a little befuddled <laughs> because they're not used to hearing that. And then people who are used to hearing just the contemporary version when they play with say a guitar player who does not use the G chord when they don't hear the G it throws them that way but either way you'll hear it it doesn't matter for you as a solo player you're going to keep playing the same break so having said all that let's just play a standard version this will probably be very similar to what you what everybody plays I'll just play a standard Scruggs version <laughs> Scruggsisms has that drive, has the ID lick, the single string lick. Now one thing that's uh, easy about Pike County because it's just basically A and E, various measures of A to E, that it's really easy to just throw together a bunch of low position licks, like take your G licks, transpose them up to A with a capo and just start throwing G licks together. And that's all well and good for an improvised version, but it, if you do that too much, too often, then you've just whitewashed uh, Pike County Breakdown out of existence. Nothing becomes special about the tune anymore. So one thing I like to always keep intact is some version of that. Even if it's a stylized version of that, I try to keep that intact for my first solo. If, if you're in a jam session situation, let's say, and there's three or four different opportunities for you to get a break on this song, then you could just say, well, I'm not going to play this anymore because everybody knows it's Pike County. But I think your first break should stay pretty true to the melody, and if you don't have a handle on the single string lick yet, spend a lot of time getting it down pat so that you'll have an authentic version of the song. One place to substitute without ruining the entire structure of the song is the tag lick areas. So... Here. That tags the first section of the song. Now that is just a standard tag and it does belong as actual melody, I guess, but since it's at the end of the phrase, that would be a good place to start substituting. So it's 
about a couple of beats long. So any, you know, two, two and a half, three beat lick that you think you can squeeze in that little section and not, not disrupt the flow of the melody, that would be a good place to substitute. Any of the standard, any of the standard Scruggs licks that you know that last a couple of beats, they will substitute as a new tag lick. So that would be one spot to, you know, drop in a new idea. Then we'll go into the next section. I would probably keep that intact, especially for my first break. Because it's really fine, really hard to find anything that's going to substitute for that and keep the melody like that, you know. So I'm not going to mess with this. But I am going to do something that you might think is blasphemous. I'm going to move that single string lick to a new location using melodic style thinking. But I haven't lost the notes. I've just moved one note out of place and these notes same notes but they have a slightly different feel. Melodic style has more of that flowing kind of feel. Where single string is you know, real staccato, the notes die off real quickly. Melodic out, the notes kind of bleed over each other. And all I'm doing is playing the first string at uh, five and the second string at seven, and I'm playing a one, two, one open pattern. So they're both closed, and then one becomes open. One, two, one, one, two, one, and then I'm going to shift over to the third string at uh, seven and then play open first. So it's a melodic take on the single string lick. And you can use whatever fingers, thumb, and index, two fingers, whatever you like for the right hand. Another variation on that is I'll not release the first string so soon. I'll play one, two, one, two, one, two, and it has a little more dissonance in it. And then I'll release the first string, so that's a variation. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, three, one. So either one of those will work. And let me substitute that in. again because it's so short and uh, and again the places I would look would be tag ending places so the very end of your solo instead of doing that same tag lick from the first time through the tune substitute something else and another thing I like to do instead of using always standard Scruggs tags, I might do a uh, melodic tag. Uh, melodic tags are great and they change up the flavor of the end of the tune if you manage to squeeze one in and it doesn't disrupt the melody because you're at the end, you're tagging the melody at this point. So one tag that I like to do is kind of a weird climbing thing that starts on notes of the scale. <laughs> tag the song with something like that you know I don't know how I'm going to combine the notes when I get to the end but you can do whatever you want when you get to the end of the pattern but the pattern itself is the third string at seven and this is notes of an A scale going down so I'm uh oh my compressor kicked in sorry about that uh, noise in the background so you have three fretted there at seven, open two, and the four string at nine. Three, two, four. So three notes, three, two, four, and I'm going thumb, index, thumb with my right hand. You could go thumb, index, middle if you like. 
Now I'm going to switch to this note, which is a higher note in the A scale, but again, we're just going to go down. So it's a three note passage, then we go one note higher and go three notes down. This pattern is two, one, started the pattern to it. Three, two, four, two, one, three. And now I'm going to go to the fifth string open. These are the two notes we use to play around with the single string passage melodically. Five, one, two. Open second. Five. Open first. So play around with those ideas. Hopefully that can spice it up, but just uh, uh, take some word of advice and don't just go crazy with the Scruggs licks and just totally blow the melody out of the water. I think it's such a cool song that you want to try to keep the integrity of the tune intact, but you can still have fun and substitute ideas, but just be careful that you don't overdo it with your standard Scruggs licks. And next video, we'll stay with the tune, and I'm actually going to show you an up-the-neck break for Pike County, which you don't commonly hear on the banjo, which will be pretty cool, so I hope you'll enjoy that. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.